you're ready for the English. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, there's Steph. Hello, Stephanie. Oh, hi, Stephanie. Hi. Hello. I think when when because Stephanie set up the meeting on the Zoom 500, when you logged in, you're now automatically the host. Am I? Yep. Okay, so I will. Which means that you would have to. At least for two All right. Seconds. Here we go. Good luck. Yeah, good luck, everybody. <laughs> It'll be Ooh. good. <laughs> it will. Exciting. Whoa. 140. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Hi. Hi. You can take a few seconds to say hi before we actually start our programming. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hello, Hello everyone. Hello. Hello. Hello, I'm not coming hi. in. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hi. Good morning. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. 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 Hello. 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 Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hello. This is Cam. I can't get my picture, Janelle. Hello. I have a picture, but I'm on the corner. I'm not sure what's happening. That's Hello, okay. everyone. Oh, there I am, right there. Hi, everyone. Oh, okay. You, you Hi, may know. Hi. There's going to be 300 people, possibly, in this event. So you oh, might not see so yourself angel. on the screen because there are so many people. So don't worry. Um, so letting people say hi, and then we're going to invite you all to share your uh, video um, and your, your microphone. My picture is up. This is Cam. My picture is up, but the name shows Sylvie Ann Perry, which is our president at St. Teresa's Conference. That's okay. That horrible noise. Ah. There. Pat Derbyshire is there, imagine. I am here, yes. And Marion Grady is there, imagine. <laughs> so depending on where you are across the country, it might be afternoon or it might be morning. So hello to everyone. We're just going to give it our uh, last few people the chance to come in. And so um if you can thank you for being patient and um ah. i'll give instructions just before we actually start i'll give instructions so that we don't have any interference um during our webinar so thank you Okay. Um, Janelle, I'm I'm trying to find out why I can see, let's see, 12 people, but it's only one third of my screen. What should I do to have a full screen? Um so in terms of your screen, what you would like to for those who are on a um uh, like a, a computer rather than a tablet or whatnot on the yep. top right hand corner yep. um, you should click on speaker view and then you'll be able to actually see the, the speakers for today um, so it said you have to click on on a little icon that says view and then click on speaker view um, I'm not quite sure for tablets how that works but um, just if you please ensure that you are on, um, on speaker view mode. So then you'll see myself, 
uh, Bishop Pierre, Gabrielle, and, and Sister Sandy on the screen. Might also be that blank square beside the X that'll enlarge the screen too. Oh, is, that's what we do? Okay. Ah, got it. Thank you. Hi, everyone. And this is Luke talking here. I'll be serving as kind of the uh, main tech support today. And so if you have any tech issues, uh, you can message me directly in the chat and I can try and help you one on one. And we have a number of other co hosts as well, too, who can uh, who can help out. And so if you message me directly whenever you have tech issues that will minimize interruptions to the meeting and, and keep things going well as well, too. So just introducing myself as our as, as the tech support team uh, today. Hi, everyone. First Nations, obviously. Oh, lovely. Isn't this is just lovely? I love it. Oh, yeah, he is Arnos. Yes, yeah. lovely, lovely family, the Arnos. So, uh, so before we begin, because we are going to be, uh, so we've already started recording, but we'll That's be on him. Facebook Live in about uh, a minute's time. So I'm going to give you some instructions so then we can, uh, so then this e event can flow nicely. Um, so before we start our pro officially our programming, um, we would like to give you a few guidelines. So yes, you can message Luke if you have any technical issues. So at this moment, I'd ask you all to please mute all your microphones. So please mute your microphones as well as shut off your camera. This will minimize interference. This will also minimize uh, any, any chance of having any uh, bad internet connection. So then we can actually uh, have a good uh, hour together. Um, we are also inviting you uh, to participate in this by asking your questions through the chat feature. So please uh, write down your questions in the chat. They will be, uh, people will, we have a team that's keeping an eye on the chat and will be able to either respond or forward them to me when we get to the question period at the end of our, uh, at the end of our session together. So uh, without further ado, I will give Luke the kind of 30 seconds to get us going on Facebook Live, and then we can um, start, uh, start our event. <clears throat> Going live shortly in three. Two. And almost one. And one and we are live as of this moment. Welcome, hello to all of you who have joined us today from across the country. Welcome to our first national online event to launch us into Share Lent 2021. My name is Janelle Delorme. I'm the Regional Animator uh, for Development and Peace for the region of Manitoba and Thunder Bay. We would like to, at this moment, acknowledge the territory on which we are located. Since we are all located at different places around Turtle Island, I invite you to type in the chat to recognize the territory that you are on. I acknowledge that I'm on Treaty 1 territory, the ancestral lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota and Demi peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We are all situated somewhere on Turtle Island. Respecting the treaties and agreements that have been concluded on these territories and acknowledging the wrongs and mistakes of the past, we are dedicated to moving forward in a spirit of reconciliation. At this moment, I would like to invite Sister Sandra Stewart of the Sisters of Our Lady of the Missions, 
one of the religious communities that have generously donated to our matching fund for our Share Year Round program, something which I will tell you all about at the end of our webinar. So Sister Sandy, I invite you to lead us in our campaign prayer, a prayer found in Fratelli Tutti. Microphone. Thank you, Janelle. Hello, everyone. So this is a prayer to our creator, the divine presence in all things, the Holy One. So maybe just take a moment to breathe uh, a few deep cleansing breaths as we prepare to uh, put ourselves in the presence of God and one another. Lord, Father of our human family, you created all human beings equal in dignity. Pour forth into our hearts a fraternal spirit, a deep friendship, and inspire in us a dream of renewed encounter, dialogue, justice, and peace. Move us to create healthier societies and a more dignified world, a world without hunger, poverty, violence, and war. May our hearts be open, open to all the peoples and nations of the earth. May we recognize the goodness and beauty that you have sown in each of us and thus forge bonds of unity, common projects, and shared dreams. Amen. Thank you, Sister Sandy. So today is World Day for Social Justice. And it's probably the best time for us to remember um, and reiterate the mission of Development and Peace. So the Canadian Catholic Organization for Development and Peace, Development and Peace Caritas Canada, is a democratic movement for international solidarity. We support partners in the Global South in the pursuit of alternatives to unjust social, political and economic structures. We educate the Canadian population about the causes of impoverishment of peoples and mobile, we mobilize actions for change. In the struggle for human dignity, Development and Peace associate, associates with social change groups in the North and the South. It supports women in their search for social and economic justice. Development and Peace, Caritas Canada, is the official development organization of the Canadian Catholic Church and is inspired by the values of the gospel, particularly the preferential option for the poor. So Wednesday, we entered this time of Lent, a time of prayer, fasting and almsgiving. This year, we will journey together a little differently since many of us cannot come together as a faith community. This year, the theme of our campaign is Share Love, Share Lent. It is inspired by Pope, Pope Francis's new encyclical, Fratelli Tutti. This is a social encyclical dedicated to fraternity and social friendship. Its message proposes a way of life that is in tune with the gospel and invites us to live a love that overcomes the barriers of geography and space, namely an open fraternity that makes it possible to recognize, value, and love each person, regardless of physical proximity, no matter where they were born or where they live. Pope Francis reminds us that a love capable of transcending borders is the basis of what in every city and country can be called social friendship. Genuine social friendship within a society makes true universal openness possible. As such, the world exists for everyone because all of us were born with the same dignity. Differences of color, 
religion, talent, place of birth or residence, and so many others cannot be used to justify the privileges of some over the rights of all. As a community, we have an obligation to ensure that every person lives with dignity and has sufficient opportunities for his or her integral development. So in this spirit of fraternity, I would like to introduce our guests who will be discussing the mission and the values of development and peace and what that means in 2021. So our special guest today is Father John Patrick Goyi, Director of the Justice, Development and Peace Commission in Nigeria, a longtime partner of Development and Peace. Father John Patrick is a priest from the Democratic Republic of Congo. As a priest with a vision of liberation theology and engaged citizenship, Father John Patrick see seeks to improve citizen participation in a democratic governance through political awareness and encouraging participation in budgeting and monitoring. The JDPC advocates for a new participatory and socially just development framework and works to strengthen the capacity of communities to critically analyze government performance and budgets at all levels. Father Goyi is also a board member of several human rights organizations in Nigeria. He is a member of the National Episcopal Commission for Justice and Peace and the African Coordinator for Justice and Peace at the Rome-based CICM Missionary Institute. He has written several books and publications on human rights, democratic oversight, and the role of the church in social justice and education. So we welcome Father John Patrick from afar. I do not believe he was able to join us, but he has sent his, um, what he will be sharing with us. And we're so happy to be able to share uh, with you today um, what he has sent. So joining the conversation are uh, Bishop Pierre Goudreau, Bishop of the Diocese of Saint-Anne-de-la-Pocatière, uh, Bishop Goudreau is also a member of the National Council at Development and Peace and sits on the executive. Uh, welcome, Bishop Pierre. You can say hello. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, and last but not least, we have Gabrielle Dupuis, who is originally from Manitoba. She is a young adult member involved since 2013, but I know she was doing things in her parish uh, well before well before that um, and she is also the president of the anglophone um ottawa cornwall diocesan council so welcome again thank you hello everyone and many thanks to all of you uh, who are joining us today as we launch our 2021 share lent campaign um, so to start us off, I think it's really important for us to better understand the mission and the values of development and peace. Um, Bishop Pierre, in 1967, the bishops of Canada founded development and peace based on the principle of the preferential option for the poor. In 2019, you yourself had the chance to go to Peru for a pilgrimage and had the opportunity to meet families from the Uros and Chiquas indigenous communities. How did this encounter make the preferential option for the poor a reality for you? And why is this so important as the basis of our work at Development and Peace? Thank you, Janelle. And once again, warm greetings to all of you. For, uh, greetings from uh, saint anne la pocatière Quebec. Um, as the Janelle mentioned, it's true, in 2019, I had the privilege to uh, go on a pilgrimage with 25 persons in Peru. Uh, we were walking on the steps of four Peruvian saints, St. Rose of Lima, St. Martin of Porres, St. Toribio, and St. John Macias. But beside that, we were also in dialogue with some uh, indigenous uh, communities, uh, like uh, Janelle mentioned, the Uros in the Quechua. And I have to, to say that I was very touched personally uh, by their warm hospitality, their deep faith, and also their courage, you know, to live in, in, in their situation. So 
uh, when I think of that experience, uh, for me, as a Christian and a member of Development and Peace, uh, the option for the poor reminds me that there is an inseparable link between my faith in Christ and the poor. I recall Jesus saying, uh, um, uh, every time you have done, done, you have done something to uh, one of my brothers, you have done it to me. So uh, this, um, this word of Jesus invites me really to value uh, the person who is fighting poverty, uh, whether here or elsewhere in the world, in his goodness, in his way of being, in his culture, his way of living, his faith also. So for me, cho choosing Jesus Christ is choosing the poor, and choosing the poor is also choosing solidarity, justice, and love. I would say that uh, the option for the poor in the is really for me the face of love. It invites me to carry in my prayer my brothers and sisters who are fighting poverty, uh, to recognize also that you know sometimes giving money is important, especially in some emergency situation but it does not solve everything. So for me, it means that uh, the option of the poor is also to, to get closer to the poor, to meet them, to know them, to love them, and to support them also, so that they may become really the agents of their own development. So in my diocese, I do at times participate to some activities of justice and solidarity. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop Pierre. And I, I think, uh, you know, what I what I hear and what I know Pope Francis has been calling us to is this culture of encounter, is where can we encounter people that are different from us and learn from them? Um, and by also learning from them, then we can walk uh, alongside them in solidarity uh, as brothers and sisters. And you talk about, you know, the the, the fact that, of course, development in, in peace, we, we are, the way that we support our partners is through donations. Uh, but we also have to think beyond that. And what does that mean? And how do we, in essence, uh, how do we become close to one another? And how do we, uh, how do we encounter the other, whether it's through our development and peace partners um, or our, on our own uh, journey through, in life? And in fact, this uh, really gets to the question that I asked uh, Father John Patrick. Um, so here we go. Um, I asked him, we must remember here in Canada that our donation to development and peace is not only a, a charitable act towards impoverished communities around the world, but we must go further and live in solidarity with our partners. Uh, important pillars at Development and Peace are solidarity and subsidiarity. So what is the importance of the partnership model at Development and Peace with our partners in the South? And here's his answer. Uh, thank you for that question. The partnership between uh, Justice Development and Peace Commission of the Catholic Diocese of Ijebode, which somehow uh, mirrors the other partners of development and peace in the South with the Catholic Development Group Association of Canada, CCODP, it's based on mutual trusts, mutual understanding mutual respect going towards what pope francis calls the culture of encounter the culture of encounter which promotes dialogue between all of us human beings as brothers and sisters that means we recognize the fundamental dignity of each individual development and peace has actually been promoting that sense of mutual respect, mutual recognition, 
because all and each one of us, we have been created in the image of God. And therefore, you discover the image of God in each one of us. The culture of encounter, which have been promoted by development and peace, I cannot recollect once. For in the, in the past 20 years, more than 20 years, we've been uh, cooperating with development and peace, responding to a call for proposals. Call for proposal means someone has defined his own objective, his own goals, his own priorities. Then you come in. If you fit in, we'll go ahead. But development and peace has been coming in the culture of encounter to meet our own needs, our own priorities. We have been identifying and articulating properly. So if there is any dialogue, a sort of discussion between us and CCODP, it has been in order to clarify our views to the Canadian community, not the Canadian community imposing their views and priorities on us, but they listening to our priorities and responding to our call for support, not they calling for proposals. So the partnership, the model of partnership between CCODP and partners in the South has been that of empowering the partners in the South, recognizing their inalienable dignity, reaffirming the fact that they have the right to be different, to be different because they are the children of God just the same way the Canadians are the children of God. That the fact of being developed technologically, the fact of having more material or financial means than the others, did not give them the right to think as being superior to them, but rather as being equal. And I think that's a model that needs to be emulated in the cooperation between North and South. Cooperation within the G20, cooperation within the United Nations, mutual respect, mutual recognition, and mutual cooperation. Uh, I think what is wonderful about Father John Patrick's um, testimonial is that it really reaffirms uh, to us that the model of solidarity, the model of, of uh, uh, that we use at Development and Peace uh, is one of mutual respect. Um, it is one that we should be proud of and that we should recognize that, that the way that we function is quite different from, from that of other organizations. Um, we have been working with Father John Patrick for over 20 years. It's a beautiful uh, um, mutual relationship that we have with him. He's come to Canada on, on several occasions. Uh, and so if ever you have had the opportunity to meet him, uh, it's just a, a wonderful chance uh, to get to meet a uh, um, uh, a partner that uh, can express how the the way that development and peace supports partners is is really uh, the, the the way to go in terms of international solidarity. Um, Gabriel, Father John Patrick talks about empowerment and empowering communities. Um, and in 2013, you had the opportunity to take part in a solidarity trip to Madagascar to meet development and peace partners. Why is participation uh, important? So both in terms of membership participation as well as youth and young adult involvement, but also in terms of community participation and empowerment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, it's always, it's an honor to be following these two wise men um, to be also speaking today. Um, and for me, being a member of DNP means active and engaged participation. And it, the really, the crux for me started in uh, my trip to Madagascar with uh, other DNP members to visit our partners. And one on the, just to give a little story, on one of the first days we were there, we went to go visit one of our partners who was doing a lot of civic education because there was a process of 
election that was happening and it, it was quite a, a tense time on that front. And one of the things they were doing is going right where the women were washing the clothes and the community baths, I don't know necessarily the right word, but they were washing the clothes right in this public space. And the people were there showing and had showing a demonstration of how to fill up the election bulletin, not to tell people how to vote, but just uh, well, to physically how to do it and not in which direction to vote per se, but just to teach people because they might not have ever done it or they, they th that might be the reason they don't show up for election day because they don't feel like they don't know how to do it. And so to just enable them to feel like they have as much right to participate in the election as their neighbor. Um, and I thought it really marked me that they were there in this communal area sharing this instead of expecting people to come to them to a workshop or ask them to get out of their daily life but they were going right to the people and that same organization was also training uh, thousands of volunteers to do election observation and so they were doing many things that was one of the things but uh, it really struck a really strong image for me and mostly it reminded me that like one of the axes of DMP was civic education and you know, I knew about that important in Canada, but to see that that was also when we think of development and peace, that is also a very important thing and to seek to make sure that our partners look to help people participate in their own community to look at the issues that are there and feel like they have the power over them and that's where I see the empowerment. Um, and similarly with the membership like my own per participation in DMP has made me feel like I have. I, I can take more of my voice, I can take more of my space, I have something to say, but also I, with the MP, I'm given some of the tools to understand the structures that mm -hmm. are there, that things that, how the world works and, and giving myself critical tools to be able to have something um, proper to say and elevate the voice of the partners. Um, because at the end of the day, like they, they have so much wisdom and they know what is going on and listening to people like Father John Practice play is what helps us go forward and help us play a good role in society. Um, I also learned a lot from like taking active part in elaborating campaigns, uh, creation of events, activities. I love creating intergenerational activities, regional activities here in Ottawa. We have the French DC and the Gatineau DC. We, we, we've recently been doing a lot of activities together is, and that is something I'm quite proud of. And, um, and I, I, with the membership, like, we learn from each other, like, uh, members bring their passions, their interests, um, their skill sets, like, we don't have all the same careers, all the same backgrounds. So these kind of coming together and organizing things together, it one, it encourages you, but it also, we're much stronger, and these events uh, happen because everybody brings something different and, and stronger, and um, yeah, and so I also want to mention a bit on the youth side. Um, I've been involved since uh, with the youth movement, specifically going to youth assembly and that kind of stuff since 2013, and when I first came, I was more in an observation mode. I didn't want to cause a fuss. I, I just wanted to learn and all that, but I was really encouraged from the get-go to, to not be afraid to, to raise my voice and to ask questions, to seek to understand better, but also to say things to, if I had something to add or something to contribute, to not be afraid and, you know, being uh, helped by, I remember uh, Ariane Collin to write my first resolution, um, you know, all these kind of things, participating in the democratic movement um, was my first experience of that was really with DMP because uh, when my 18th birthday happened, it took me a while before I was able to vote. So really more my first democratic experiences with, with DNP. Um, and so, yeah, so, and now I, as a older young adult, I'm still a young, young adult, but I've been in the youth movement for quite a while now. So in some ways I feel like a veteran on that front. And I just try to also make sure that there's room and to encourage, enable other people's voices to also be, to come up and um, and we actually have a very strong group of young representative right now across Canada. We just had a youth assembly and it was really encouraging for me to see like the strength and the diversity of the people who were there. And uh, it gives me a lot of hope. So uh, just to say that that is always, it's always in transition. It's always kind of, there's waves, but it's always there. And we just have to leave room also for people to learn and grow into those roles as well. So, um, Thank you so much, Gabrielle. I think uh, first, firstly, you you raised the, the the point about kind of um, 
civil society and our, and our participation and 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 that link between what uh, is done in, with our partners, where our partners are encouraging uh, people's participation, as well as here in Canada, where through our social movement, we encourage participation and, and want to give space to uh, different people. I think what's wonderful about this webinar today is that we have the participation of a bishop, we have the participation uh, of a priest who's also a partner of Development and Peace, and the participation of, of a, a young adult who has kind of grown in this movement and it really demonstrates the fact that all of us have this place in this beautiful movement where we are we are building a world a better world a world of justice a world of peace um so thank you for for, sh for sharing your perspective and in fact uh you know gabrielle and i um have have known each other for quite some time we have the same mentor uh, sister norma mcdonald uh who has accompanied us both throughout this movement um I was also able to see Gabrielle kind of grow into the movement as well. So it's it's just a, such a beautiful thing to see um, people uh, join the movement and make that kind of you know occupy that space and make sure that their voice that their voice is heard. Um, and, and so we get to we're in 2021 and you know we're not in 1967 we're not at Vatican II where it inspired in fact uh, uh, the foundation of our organization um, and and so there are more recent uh, documents that are actually inspiring uh, our work or seem to actually be speaking to us I should say um, so Bishop Pierre, in a recent Caritas Internationalis webinar, His Eminence Cardinal Taigle, who is the president of Caritas, said Pope Francis has been speaking to the heart of the work that we do at Caritas since the beginning of his pontificate. At his inaugural mass, he wanted a poor church for the poor. We exist as Caritas to serve and to, to accompany and to defend the poor. So how are his two most recent encyclicals, especially, but I know he has a third one and you might uh, talk about that one. Uh, uh, so his two most recent encyclicals, Laudato Si and Fratelli Tutti, how are they beacons of light for the work of development and peace? Thank you, Janelle. Uh, first of all, I think we can be grateful for Pope Francis, you know, uh, as uh, our pastor, as, uh, as a disciple of Christ and a man of hope and faith who, is, who has that strong option for the poor. And we can be, of course, uh, grateful also for the two documents that you mentioned, uh, La Dottosi and Fratelli Tutti. Um, if I take the first one, La Dottosi, um, I think it calls on the mission of development and peace to spread ever more solidarity with the poorest who have a place in the common home, eh, the earth, which is such a, a gift of God. The Amazon campaign was a good example. Uh, this was an opportunity to raise awareness about the issue of safeguarding natural resources in this region. I think of the Amazon forests, of course, and the people's place where they live. La Dato Si invites us also to, to speak out, to take action, to defend the rights of the poorest for climate justice, for water resources justice, environment and habitat justice. It starts sometimes with small gestures that each and every one of us can make by choosing a more modest way of life, for example, or reducing the use of plastic, being opposed of the abuses from foreign companies that exploit natural resources without respect of the local communities. Secondly, we have also another document, Fratelli Tutti. Uh, is, it's a beautiful text that stimulates, I would say, the mission of development and peace in order to to continue its promotion of human dignity. We are all brothers and sisters, says Fratelli Tutti. And so if we are brothers and sisters, it invites me, it invites all of us to change our view of each other. Especially I would say the view of our brothers and sisters who are fighting poverty uh, here and elsewhere in the world. 
And this highlights, I would say, also the values promoted by development and peace, solidarity, justice, fraternity. For Fratelli Tutti, the option for the poor must lead us to encounter and to build up friendship with the persons who fight poverty. And yes, I would like maybe just to say a few words about another document, which was one of the first of uh, uh, Pope Francis, uh, uh, a document that is for me very important. Also, it's Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel. Uh, it's also a major document that relaunches the mission of the church, I would say the mission of development and peace, because in that document we can hear the, the cry of the heart of Pope Francis, I want a poor church for the poor. So it's a church that is not afraid to get close, to go and to meet the other in its misery. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bishop Pierre. Um, so wonderful to hear you to, to hear you speak about the importance of these of all of these documents mm -hmm. and how uh, we do have this wonderful pastor, this wonderful leader who um, is is um, is making sure that we hear the cry of the cry of the poor and the cry of the earth um, and that uh, we take care of our brothers and sisters and to reflect on how we should be taking care of our brothers and sisters. Um, Gabriel, uh, as, a, as a young Catholic, what is the, the importance of, of these encyclicals um, uh, of Laudato Si and more recently of, of Fratelli Tutti in your own kind of personal journey, um, not only your place within... Uh, yeah, so I think first and foremost, what I was thinking about is this is these encyclicals are energizing. Um, they, they give us a new narrative, a new story that we're able to, to kind of find our place within what is happening in our world. And um, it's very, and by the invitation of it all, of always being in dialogue and re-looking at our own lives, but also turning towards the other. There's a lot of, like, you're not done looking at this after you've looked at it a few times, you're still always invited to go back to it. And um, I think also back to when it first came out, it was quite a pivotal time for me. Um, I was trying to, I wanted to kind of do more for the environment, but I felt there was a, a little bit of uneasiness about how to do, do it because I was hearing kind of, you sometimes hear in the environmental movement, a, a bit of a discourse about, you know, human bad, nature good. But with Laudato Si and a, a lot of other authors as well, but Laudato Si really says very plainly that this is not what we're talking about. We're talking about finding our proper place within this balance about our interdependence and about the role that we are called to play in all of this as humans, but that we're not superior, we're not lower, but we're, we're called to play a role. And, and, and I also felt like, okay, my church has something to say about this. I can say it proudly as well. I can be part of this movement. And so in 2015, when it came out, we were in Ottawa, we were organizing a big walk and it was DMP with many other organization, environmental action groups, um, unions, civil society. We had the Archbishop from Gatineau talking before the walk and saying a prayer. So it was a big mix of people and we had about 25,000 people who walked and um, there, you know, we could probably wear our Catholic flag as well because there was even somebody who had a caught up of uh, Pope Francis and people were happy to see him and, and all that kind of stuff. So it was, it was good to kind of feel like we had our place in this movement. We had something to say um, and encourages us to go further in it, you know, never to be settled, but always to try to, 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 to seek to, to do more and to think about it. Um, and so that was really nice to see. And then with uh, Fratelli Tutti and um, it just keeps, it's like we're going back to it again. We're just reminded again to think about how our faith responds to the world and to what is happening. Um, and we see a lot of division and the pandemic has just exacerbated some of that while it has also given us a lot of beautiful moments of hope about how we want to connect to each other and how we want to be there for each other. 
And I think that's what Fratelli Tucci taps into is those moments and that desire to be there for one another and to help each other beyond borders as some others have said. Um, and it's about being in dialogue with others and, um, and also working with other people who are people of goodwill, who wanna work towards something good, even if we don't always 100% line up or whatever, but there is a common ground that we can found and we can approach people with love and compassion. And I think there's fruitful work that can be done in that, that we don't need to be only working amongst Catholics or whatever, but just people who want to do something good. And, you know, I fear sometimes in our church that we, and, and probably not just in our church, but I, you know, I can speak for what I see is a, a, sometimes a turning in or a desire to defend ourselves a little bit or de deal with our own internal um, stuff. But we have to, this, encyclical reminds us towards turning towards the other to get outside of our church walls and to to go see where the need is and to continually put ourselves in dialogue with others in encounter with others and that's um something that you know i have to remind myself to do daily and so you know that is that that letter is a reminder to that and i think all of our church too like we we can just gain by trying to do that work of always trying to be in an encounter with others. And that means in Canada where there's a lot of need as well and with our partners in the South and to always be listening to what is what is needed and what um, instead of necessarily coming with the solutions or thinking we know everything, but to the listening first and then responding with love and compassion, I think will, will, will make us go very far even with just the stuff, you know, to start with the place of listening. Thank you, Gabrielle. Um, that was so rich, and I, I think part of you know what you're you're saying really is it comes to, it actually um, echoes Pope Francis, where he he calls us to that that space of dialogue. He calls us to uh, to to speak to another that might actually be different from us. But where can we find that common ground? Where you know he is really calling us to, to do good for all of humanity, rather than the very few uh, taking. Uh, we need to actually be doing all of these social actions for the common good. Um, so thank you for thank you for that. Um, and in fact, this ties so well with Father John Patrick, uh, second, uh, second contribution. Um, for those who, who may have met him, you may have met him at the World Social Forum in Montreal in 2016. He was a special guest from Development and Peace. We uh, actually uh, had him uh, speak on a panel of, of, of five guests, uh, all uh, partners of Development and Peace. Um, and he, he shared with us uh, really uh, it, very important words and his thoughts. Uh, 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 La Dato Si had just come out. So here's what I have asked him, uh, you know, what has basically has happened since. So at the World Social Forum in Montreal in 2016, you shared with us what inspires you is action on behalf of justice. So you uh, had also shared with us your reflections on sin. So individual sin, structural sin, and ecological sin. So our relationship with God, our relationship with others, and our relationship with Mother Earth. The latter being a new concept proposed by Pope Francis in Laudato Si. In his third encyclical, Fratelli Tutti, is a re very relevant uh, encyclical in this time of COVID-19. Among other things, the fifth chapter speaks of a better kind of politics. It speaks of social charity and political love. So in what way is Fratelli Tutti an extension of the teachings in Laudato Si and how does this political love force us into action? Uh, thank you for that question. The partnership between The, the beauty of the Catholic social teaching is that each present Pope builds his reflection on where the those who came before him, his predecessors, have actually done. 
So we have actually been moving right from Leo the 13th in 1891, and he was talking about how the relationship with God should affect the dignity of the workers to the need for structural adjustment to ensure that the structures are not oppressive with John the 23rd, Paul the 6th, John Paul the 2nd. Francis came in to say, well, we have individual sin, relationship with God. Paul the 6th came and said, yes, on top of individual sins, we also have structural sin, laws, policies, and structures that are oppressive. And Francis comes in and says, look, it's not enough to simply say you have a relationship with God. That is true. You have structures that can be unfair and just. That is so true. But you also have the sins that are directly related to our relationship with nature. The ecology. The ecosystem. Personal sin, structural sin, ecological sin. You can see it is an entire continuum within that continuum francis comes in and say look god must be affirmed and recognized as the creator of the entire universe that means we are not living in this universe alone we are living in this universe with trees we are living in this universe with insects we are living in this universe with animal and of course the issue of the climate the rain coming, the rain going up, the ice blocks in the north, all that is part of the universe that has been created by God. Therefore, none of us has any rights to disrupt what God has actually created as good. The continuum from the ecology where we are having in Laudato Si, where the Pope speaks about the common home, we must take into consideration the fact that we are living into a common home. But that common home, how we relate as humans with the biodiversity, how we relate as humans with the rest of the creation, the Pope of Fratelli Tutti is coming down, says, look, our relationship with other human beings is capital. We need to build universal fraternity. We are our brothers and our sisters keepers. So we have no right to put in place mechanism, policies in international relation, policies in economic development that will be ignoring the other ones. So here, one very critical notion the Pope brought in is the obligation we have to build our bridges and mend the old ways. There are wounds that must be healed. We have wounded ourselves by ignoring certain groups of people. They, the Indians, during the time of the discovery of America, were annihilated. The slave trade has destroyed Africans. The policy towards economic development and capitalism, it has suppressed and exploited people throughout the world. Fratelli Tutti is, let's put in place mechanism to adjust. Let's accept our history and change the things we need to change. We need to create that culture of dialogue. Culture of dialogue, culture of encounter, we have the courage to accept our responsibility and stretch our hands to ensure we have a space where we have mutual respect and we move together as brothers and sisters condemned to live together. And that's the only thing that we give glory to God. And the cooperation between CCODP in Canada, JDPC and other partners down in the South, has been promoting that culture of encounter through mutual dialogue for the promotion of the image of God in all men and women 
from the north, from the south. That is the glory of God. That is development cooperation. I think those are such beautiful kind of concluding words about true mutual dialogue and uh, the way that development and peace um, is in the world and how we uh, how we communicate and how we accompany and how we can walk in solidarity with our partners in the global south. It is very reaffirming uh, to, to hear that from from one of our partners who has been with us. Uh, so he, Father John Patrick has been a partner for over 20 years and we are uh, so blessed to have him as a partner. Um, so at this time, uh, we invite you to write your questions in the chat, please. So if you have a few questions, we might go over the hour, but if you have a few questions for, uh, for Bishop Pierre, uh, or for Gabrielle or for both, uh, we invite you to write your question in the chat. So as we are waiting, um, Bishop Pierre and, and Gabrielle, um, you know, we are entering in this time of Lent. It's often a time of reflection, a time of, of what, what can we do? Uh, you know, at, we also do, you know, it's a time of fasting. So what can we give up? Um, so what are the actions that we should be taking as, as, as Christians, as Catholics, uh, during this time of Lent that will help our brothers and sisters, that will accompany our brothers and sisters uh, for this, if, this fraternal love that we are called uh, we are called to mm. go ahead Bishop okay uh, well I think the, the Lent season is a great occasion to change our lives and as concrete actions uh, I think it's very important to recall that we're still in you know during the pandemic uh, and so we may have a special thought also for those uh, who are just by themselves alone in their room or um, also our elderly people. And so it can be a great occasion to get closer to value the culture of encounter, just maybe uh, giving a call to someone to encourage him or her. Uh, so that's a small but very concrete action. Uh, maybe the land season invites us also to, to change our way of looking at people. Uh, we do have also some poor people around us, you know, but sometimes it's more hidden and we don't have the same, uh, let's say, uh, perception of it compared to the, 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 the impoverished communities in the South. So maybe it's a great occasion also to uh, value uh, the person that we meet, uh, the poorest close to us, and also to pray for them. Thank you, Bishop Pierre. Um, Gabrielle? Yeah, um, those are all great things. Um, I just thinking about uh, the when, because I always understood sin as like something that breaks our connection to God or to others. And so during this time of Lent, to, to kind of do this reflection on what are some of the things I'm doing in my life currently, choices, and you know, we can think of our choices as consumers, choices uh, of how we spend our time, all these things that are um, either breaking our connection with others or uh, maybe not making them as strong and all these different things. So, so just to kind of do that reflection, but it's, it's like part of it is individual work. Everybody's at a different place and to, to kind of see, and you can take one choice, one action, um, Lent is 40 days, so you've got time to try different things maybe or different, but uh, to kind of try to do that work. And I, I mean, I believe strongly also in like, you know, saying it out loud to one person at least, writing it down, all that kind of stuff to make it more concrete, but also to be gentle with each other and to encourage each other in that journey of making better choices, um, not to be judgmental, but just to, to encourage our friends and family to people we care about um, to make um, those choices in an, in an invitational way and not in a in a way that can be harmful to people if we're we're too judgmental or if we we don't give them the chance to grow into those choices so yeah 
Thank you, Gabrielle. I think part of it is that that invitation and that journey, because we might not be at all be at different places on on this journey of ours. Um, and uh, so we have we have one question uh, from Rebecca Rathbone. Um, she says, "Thank you for your testimonies." And this is for both uh, Bishop Goudreau, uh, Bishop Pierre, and Gabrielle. So, <laughs> so she's putting you on the spot. So, can we please hear your thirty-second elevator pitch for supporting development and peace? So, if you were stuck in an elevator with with a per one person and you had to explain to them what development and peace is in 30 seconds the time it gets you know you're at the bottom and it gets to your neck the next floor what would you what would you say to to encourage <laughs> bishop pierre go right ahead okay i would say share love spread out solidarity think of the poor <laughs> that's uh, that's absolutely wonderful. Uh, thank you. Yes, share love, share land, of course. And Gabrielle, what would you say? Uh, maybe that and uh, also, uh, you know, as Canadians, we are extremely privileged and lucky to live in this country and to have the advantages that we have. And so one thing we can do in that case with our privilege as Canadians is to find out more about the injustices that are happening in the world, learn, you know, be aware of them, but also contribute some of our money and some of our time to causes through DMP and through the work that they do. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, so we have a comment here wondering if uh, all so just to let you know, all of this has been recorded. So it will be on our YouTube page very shortly. I think there are a lot of people that would want to be able to share uh, this beautiful conversation that we've had with with other parishioners. Um, and one la and so one last question that I think is actually very pertinent. I have I would have my own answer, but I'll, I'll uh, I'll ask it to you to you both. You know, some some parishioners will will tend to say that well, we should be supporting local poverty needs before international needs. Needs. So, how would you answer that? And how how do we reconcile the fact that there are needs, you know, in around us in our own backyard, and there are also needs um, on the you know internationally? So, how would you respond to that? Well, I would say maybe that uh, Fratelli Tutti teaches us that there's no border. You know, we, we are in the same uh, human family. So uh, of course, to take care of the poor here is very important, but it's also very important to help the impoverished communities elsewhere. So because we are all brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bishop Pierre and Gabrielle. Yeah, I would just, Similarly, you know, it's not one or the other. Um, and the but the reality is, as a, a country in the north, our how we live here has a great weight and impact on other countries. And so I feel that there's a responsibility that we play. And so, um, you know, that's why I do it. But um, and and there's a you know, and we have a voice that can be maybe heard. Uh, in a stronger way and there's something we can do with that privilege like I said earlier that we have but of course there's always needs here and it's not one or the other but it's to pay attention and I think ultimately it makes the justice movement and the charity work we do stronger if we do both. Um, Absolutely. I mean, if we just come back to simply we are uh, all brothers and sisters, regardless of where we are. Um, and so and, and I do agree that we we uh, we we can if we can do both. Uh, it's, it's not pitting one against the other. So we do need to move along. Um, so uh, I thank you so much, um, Bishop Pierre and, and Gabrielle for for uh, your answers to uh, to this question period. Um, so I just wanted to do one last pitch. Uh, this was the first of uh, a webinar series that we are going to be offering. This will our, you know, our online event. Uh, events are happening each week. Um, I think we're missing a little bit of information. Maybe, uh, Stephanie, if you can click one more. 
Ah, there we go. Okay, so we have our Meet Our Partners series. So on Saturday, February 27th at 11 a.m. Eastern, we have uh, Rebecca Rathbone that will be facilitating uh, a wonderful conversation uh, with Abdullah Fouad, who is a representative of Caritas, Bangladesh. And they will be discussing the Rohingya refugee crisis and the response of Caritas, Bangladesh in Cox Bazaar, um, in Cox Bazaar. So please uh, register to that webinar. All the information is available in our Share Lent 2021. Um, uh, uh, all, like all of our information that is available online. Uh, so please register to that event. If you do speak French or understand French, um, there's also a webinar coming up this week on our humanitarian aid in Lebanon. So our, our response after the explosion in Beirut. So that will be hosted by uh, Richard Rudachama, who is an animator for Western Quebec. And our special guest is uh, Rita uh, Reham, uh, the director for Caritas Lebanon. And that will be Thursday, February 25th at noon uh, Eastern time. Okay, so if you haven't heard yet, we have this beautiful uh, program that just got launched on Ash Wednesday. So this Lent, you can double your impact. We have eight religious communities that have generously offered uh, to this matching fund. So we have $130,000 to match new share year round donors, as well as those who would like to increase their share year round contribution. So your donations will be matched between, uh, so anyone who is registering between Ash Wednesday and Pentecost, so uh, up to May 23rd, um, your donation will, uh, will be matched for the equivalent of a year. So we are so happy to have these religious communities uh, help us build a new generation of monthly donors. So my pitch to you is, if you are not yet a Share Your Round donor, will you please become a Share Your Round donor? And if you already are, um, would you be able to sign up one new monthly donor? This matching fund is so wonderful because it's, yeah, it, it, uh, it, it will double your impact uh, this year. And finally, we have launched our campaign video. So this is a gift to you. We have launched our campaign video. It is available on our website. So here it is. Every year, Development and Peace provides support to millions of people living in poverty or denied their most basic rights. Our partners come from the grassroots and our global Caritas network, accompanying people as they strive to build a better future. Over the years, our logo may have changed, but our mission of solidarity with the poor has not. Across Canada, our members work to change unfair and harmful systems, guided by the richness of Catholic social teaching. Today we work for human dignity in over 30 countries in Africa, Asia, Latin America, and the Middle East, thanks to the generous support of people just like you. Will you join us? So thank you once again, uh, Bishop Pierre, uh, Father John Patrick, who was able to send his, his uh, um, testimonies uh, from Nigeria, as well as Gabrielle. Um, now to kind of uh, get us kind of, uh, I know we're all inspired uh, by this, this, this conversation, this sharing that we've had uh, today. Um, so I'd like to ask uh, Bishop Pierre if you could bless us on our, uh, so then we can really start our Lenten season well. Sure, my pleasure. To bless is, is to ask God many good for you. So that's what I will do. And uh, please uh, share it with your family. So I ask the Almighty God to um, journey with you during that Lent season. May the Holy Spirit uh, guide you also to, uh, to bear fruits, fruit of solidarity, fraternity, and love. 
And so may the Holy Spirit also guide you during your journey of this Lent season. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good Lent season. Thank you, everyone. If you want, you can, uh, we'll shut off the Facebook Live. You can put your camera on, you can put your microphone on, and you're more than welcome to say hi. Hi, Liz, I can see you. There's quite a few people, so you might not be able to see everyone, um, but uh, kind of hello to hi, everyone. everyone. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Goodbye. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye